What's going on guys? So this is Saro Angie and welcome to the sixth episode of Behind the Map. In this map we're gonna talk about well I'm gonna talk about I keep saying we're gonna talk about but yeah this map that I wanna talk about is um virtual world. So before I start like the commentary and talking about the map, um I do wanna say that I did take some um criticism from Taylorhead, so all the logic lines are completely off. So, yeah, I guess some people find it nauseating when, like, you know, there's a bunch of logics and I'm kind of, like, spinning around the camera. But for me, I, I don't really have any effect with that. But, yeah, I will, like, you know, turn them off for you. Anyways, let's get to it. So this map, this was a very interesting map. This was, like, my experimental avant-garde type of map. So this was made back in the free update, too. So back when player blocking volumes didn't have any textures and we didn't have the ability to block these um blocking volumes but i wanted to do something else because every like um custom map that i played back then it was always like some sort of hell module and i was just kind of like you know getting bored of it even though i did enjoy playing them like it was either like you know hell or some sort of cartoon type of theme and i was just kind of getting bored of it and i just wanted to be really crazy and just try to like separate myself from the crowd which what i generally like to do and yeah so with this map i decided to kind of like make a futuristic cyberpunk type of map by using like nothing but um i think it was solid yeah is this solid yeah solid player blocking volumes and transparent and all i gotta say is you know this map was really cool when i first um made it and i thought it was like my best well not my best map but i thought it was like one of my best ones but looking back to this map i feel like it hasn't aged that well which is kind of sucky because i remember i did um put quite a bit of effort um onto this map but not only that i also try to like be really experimental too so i tried to experiment by having lives instead of i mean not having lives having um infinite lives and checkpoints but at the same time i really want oh wait yeah i basically wanted to have um, checkpoints instead of lives because I definitely wanted to try out some other things that I wasn't able to do in my other maps. And, you know, this was back when I was making a lot of remakes, back when pretty much all of my maps only had one life. So, yeah, this was very, like, different. But um, even though this map hasn't hold up that well, I definitely feel like some of the inspiration helped me for my, um, you know, mapping process in the future. But let's get started with, like, what this module is all about. So this module, I call this like the blue room. So basically you're kind of in this really weird like virtual world type of area. And basically when you jump up here, you know, there's just like nothing but player blocking volumes because this is like the whole concept of this map. I just wanted to use nothing but player blocking volumes. And these things, wait, are they? Oh no, they're not like, they're not cover. They're basically um, kind of there to like block your path, but you can actually shoot through them. So I thought this was like a little bit of an interesting mechanic, and it's just something that I didn't see a lot of people um, messed around with. So I tried messing around with this, and yeah, it does kind of make like the fights a little more interesting because you know these things they do block your movement, but they don't block your shots. And this map, like, it's pretty confusing. Like, there's, like, a certain moment where you will, like, get a little confused. And it's going to be the next module. But I just want to see if there's anything else I want to say. So I think I added this just for, like, some sort of decoration. I'm not really sure why I didn't add it on this area. Or maybe because I was trying to make it really abstract. Because I do like to make my arenas abstract. And this is, like, a very a sneaky secret. So, you know, the thing with solid player blocking volumes, it's really, like, hard to see them. So you probably might not even realize there's like a platform here and when you jump up on this thing you get a lightning gun. And this box trigger is the secret. So what is it? So this is where like it gets super trippy. So this is what I'm talking about. You know in the map editor it's really easy to like see where you're going. But <laughs> when you play the game it's just really hard and you're gonna like just get stuck on certain things. So I try to make this map a lot more puzzling, a lot more, what's that word? enigmatic i think that's how you pronounce it um yeah basically this map i was really inspired by marathon and for those who never played marathon marathon is one of those games where 
it just likes to annoy you so many times on like your first playthrough. It's one of those games that really that really plays better if you play like the second playthrough or the third playthrough. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to do a lot of things that just kind of annoy you or kind of frustrate you. And it seems like a lot of people didn't like that. And that's why this map, I think it's my second most disliked map. But, you know, this map was basically an experiment. You know, I just wanted to see like how, um, what, oh my god, I hate this stupid bug. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see like how Doom players would like react to me trying to like make a map like this and i guess they didn't like it and yeah once i figured out they didn't like you know that type of map i pretty much gave up um making a map similar to this so this part is where i started to add some platforming which i eventually you know implemented in my campaign because i always thought the platforming was cool and yeah this area it's more complex more um explorative you're just trying to get like three items and basically when you get those three items you'll teleport to like the next area there's this teleporter mainly for co-op because i remember what is it i think i was playing it with void runner we had like a glitch where i managed to teleport but void runner didn't um teleport to like the module so i guess um i had to like figure out something to like fix that out wait what the heck? Oh yeah, I almost forgot there's like logic. I almost forgot I have it um, turned off because I'm like, what the hell? Why is it random teleporter here? But yeah, once you pretty much um got everything, you teleport this little very simple area here. So this is basically like a, um, it's kind of like a rail sequence. Like you're in this player blocking volume area. You can't really like go anywhere. Um, I, I don't think, wait, yeah, the enemies can still attack you, and they can still walk through it, but basically, um, you're just stuck in this area, and you're just trying to, like, survive, I think, like, three or four waves of enemies, and then, once you're done, this teleporter, um, appears, and you'll go into, like, one of the more complex modules, and this area, I actually like this one, it's super simple, but it's really fun, I just think it looks kind of cool with, like, the transparent player blocking volume and the um, solid black uh, player blocking volume. It really does look cool when you like actually play it, even though it's super simple. So let's go to like the more complex areas. This is it. Yep, this is it right here. So this is where I'm really trying to like make this area have a lot more exploration, be a lot more depth, and just have a lot more things going on here. See, playing around with like the, you know, player blocking volume, the transparent player blocking volume, trying to like create neon lights with these things. You know, I still think this looks kind of cool. I mean, yeah, Doom is not like a cyberpunk shooter, so <laughs> there's not like a lot of props that I can do, but I'm kind of glad what I was still able to do with like the player blocking volumes back in free update too. So this is where the game really starts to get like a lot harder, like the fights will get more intense. I kind of like troll you in a couple of situations. I think there's like a couple of like unsuspecting um, enemy attacks. Like some, like I sometimes like to do that just to annoy people. Mainly because I find it, I kind of like, you know, when people do that to me. So yeah, I decided to do that. And yeah, this part, um, I don't know what can I say. Like it's really fun. Like it's definitely a lot of fun if you don't mind, like, you know, um, dying quite a bit because i do feel like people are gonna die at this part quite a bit if they're not like prepared of what they're gonna expect and other than that it's pretty standard fare you're just trying to find um three power i think it's two or three yeah two red power cores uh yeah two red power cores and there's actually multiple of them but some of them are kind of like fake and basically when you go to the fake ones you activate more enemies to kill and yeah, it's pretty much that, and once that happens, you fight two barons, and once you kill two barons, teleporter will appear, and the player one will automatically teleport. The main reason why um, I do that is because of Marathon. Like, in Marathon, there's quite a bit of moments where, like, the game kind of, like, just automatically teleports you, and I just kind of wanted to do that, because, you know, I really enjoy playing Marathon, and this map was, like, somewhat inspired by Marathon. Where is it? So this part. So this is like a platforming part here. 
Oh my god. I'm getting, yeah. So this part, it's actually not really that nauseating or confusing because there's like a lot of fire. And it really gives you like a good idea of where like the platforming section is. So you get like ambushed by two revenants. It's really not, not that bad. You can totally kill them pretty quickly. And once you kill them, this thing like oh, um, opens up. And now you know that you gotta do some platforming. But the trick is, some of these platforms, um, they're actually not gonna block you. So you gotta figure out which one is the right one. And yep, it's one of these parts where you can totally die. You don't know where you're going. I think I still remember it, although I'm not quite sure. But yeah, once you um finish all the platforming, you just go in here. Some more like shooting here more um, of this situation trying to look for switches kill everyone and then you kind of go for like the last complex module here so this one is similar to like the first complex module there's a lot of exploration and I've always liked this little prop thing that I did here I think I just saw like a couple of pictures over the internet and I decided to replicate it by using like, like the player blocking volume and you know I remember in the picture it looked a lot more detailed but what can I do you know this was free update too so you know I had to do with what I can do but yeah this part you know it's very blue very tealish I actually like this part like I think this is my favorite module out of all the ones that I made and pretty much just like the first complex module this is a very combat heavy uh, fight it's also pretty tough I think this is like the hardest part of the map probably it's either this one or like the last one if you don't know where like the bfg is in the last one but the last um module is actually really easy if you know where the bfg is so basically there's kind of like some switch hunting just trying to like kill a bunch of guys once you kind of like do all that stuff and pick up the gray power core you can teleport and where is it here it is. This is the last module. So this is like a very, very simple arena. And basically, where is it? Oh, I think there's like a teleporter here. Wait, how do you do this here? Yeah, basically, I make you teleport here. And there's a BFG behind you. But if you grab a BFG, this fight is actually really easy. But even if you die a lot here, you know, there's checkpoints. You can pretty much just come back here. Just keep fighting it until you realize there's a BFG behind you or just... Try to like, you know, kill all of these guys um, using no BFG, which I don't really recommend because this fight is very, very difficult if you don't have a BFG. And once you kill everyone, there's the exit and bam, that's it. That's pretty much the map. So this map, it's one of like, you know, my most disliked maps. It's, it's a map that got a lot, a lot of dislikes. It has more dislikes than likes and, you know, I'm not too really like upset about it. I was really trying to be experimental, really trying to be different, and I feel like it didn't pay off. So, you know, this map, even though, you know, when I look back at it, I am proud of what I did, and I try to be different, try to take risks that a lot of mappers wouldn't do, and in the long run, I feel like it did kind of help me out. First of all, I really did like how, you know, this map had, like, infinite checkpoints, and I felt like that was kind of like the key to make people play more of my maps and enjoy them more efficiently, especially when I was like, you know, playing with randoms. It, it's just frustrating when you're playing with, I mean, in co-op and the map has like one life only. So yeah, I decided to make like a lot of my maps that I made for one life only have like more lives or um, completely take out the life system and add checkpoints. This map was actually my very first. Wait, oh shoot, I forgot. I should turn this off. Um, this map was actually my very first like cyberpunk and futuristic theme map. Eventually, I would tackle this um, um, what is it? This style of mapping again with City Survival, and City Survival was a massive success. And it's all because of this map right here. This map really like made me realize that it's possible to make like a futuristic or Ghost in the Shell like you know type of map instead of like making these maps that what you expect from doom like you know a hell themed map a tech based theme map you know something like that um what else did this map um help me out i know there's like one more important thing i just gotta like remember it. oh god i'm blanking out right now uh 
But, you know, even though this map does, you know, have a lot of dislikes, I don't think it's a bad map. But at the same time, I would say it is one of, like, my... Well, I wouldn't say it's one of my worst ones, but it's definitely not a map that I, um... I would say is, like, one of my best ones, or not really, like, the map that I would want people to, like, actually play if they never, like, played any of my maps. But with that said, you know, it is very experimental, so if you want something kind of, like, different, but also still feels kind of like Doom, like, there's still a lot of shooting, there's still a lot of exploring and all that stuff, like, it's just me trying to, like, play around with, like, the whole, um, visual theme of this map. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for, you know, Virtual World. And right now, I just gotta, like, remember what I need to say for, like, the third important part. I know there's, like, one more important thing that this map, like, taught me for, like, my future maps. Um, oh, yeah, I think I remember it now. So this map kind of taught me that if I try to, like, go for, like, a much more unforgiving type of experience. Because, you know, this map was very... I mean, was was inspired by Marathon, and Marathon has always been, like, an unforgiving game if you don't know what you're doing. Like, it's one of those games that really plays better. Just like I said at, the at like, the early um, minutes of the video, it plays so much better when you know what you're doing. But when you don't know what you're doing in Marathon, the game just loves to make you mad, just loves to make you feel annoyed. And that's what I pretty much did with this map. And I guess a lot of players just weren't really a fan of that type of experience like I am. Um, so yeah, you know, looking back at this map, I still, you know, think it's good. It does have, like, you know, four-player co-op too, so you don't have to, like, um, play it by yourself if you feel like it's too hard or you feel like it's not balanced enough for single-player, although it's very possible to beat this map without dying once in single-player. Extremely, extremely possible extremely possible um yeah i think that's pretty much it for this map so this is going to be like my last um what is it behind the map episode for a while and well why did i have uh I don't, oh i think this because i think like this was back in like the pre-patch days and stuff so i almost forgot since you know back then we didn't have like um what is it the ability to block walls with the player blocking volume so I remember I would like use a bunch of box triggers and basically if the enemies walk through the player blocking volume they would teleport out but you know um I actually I actually you know did say like it's good to increase the depth to 100 to like my custom geotip map but for whatever reason like on this map the enemies at least like from what I remember when I play tested this map the enemies didn't like walk out walk out of the map so it's kind of weird i don't know maybe in the future i'll probably like try to bring back the teleporter system again because that's what i used to do to prevent all of this um you know player blocking volume crisis because we couldn't block the enemies so basically you had to like barricade them or use box triggers i used box triggers because i felt like it worked better from like a futuristic standpoint instead of like you know barricading them and not only that look how big like these ma i mean these modules are barricading it would be like an absolute absolute nightmare so i'm glad those days are over but yeah this is going to be like my last behind the map episode for a while i'm still not really sure which map i want to do in the future i need to like um look at them because i feel like a lot of them i either don't really have much to say or I just can't really remember like um, the process of making these maps but with that said um I'm pretty much back to mapping because I'm gonna eventually switch my setup um temporarily I want to make a I'm gonna remake a doom 2 map monster condo I, that's one of my favorite maps and the problem with making remakes is that I can't hang um I can't hang around on my desktop because I need to like have like um an extra monitor to like you know look at doom 2 because i really don't like taking pictures or watching like youtube videos and all that stuff i like to have absolute control of like the game and then you know i have one tv for my xbox one and then i have like one extra monitor for my you know for doom 2 on the pc so i could 
you know, look at these, look at the map and try to recreate it as best as I can. And yeah, I can't wait to, you know, um, recreate that. And that's why I, I want to try to like get this video out, out of the way because I don't know how long it's going to take for me to remake Monster Condo, but I'm sure it's going to end up being really good. With that said, um, stay tuned for more videos. I'm still trying to like figure out some um, videos that I want to do for my like commentary videos, but who knows? I am, you know, I'm trying to like figure out things out here, and sometimes I come up with cool ideas. Sometimes I just come up with stupid ideas, and then I just, you know, have to like wait for some more time until like something good happens. Anyway, stay tuned for more videos, people.